Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We're diving into the microscopic side of health, where tiny cells can have big secrets. I'm Ethan Foster, your trusty observer of human quirks and questionable food additives. And I'm Alara Skye, here to convince you that food labels are more mysterious than the Bermuda Triangle. Today's tagline, carrageenan, because apparently even your yogurt can plot against your pancreas. That's the mood we're in, folks. So, Elara, I keep hearing about this thing called carrageenan. It sounds like it might be either an exotic spice or a tropical island getaway. But somehow I suspect it's neither. Right you are. Carrageenan is the unwanted party guest that sneaks into your dairy products, processed meats, and anything else that needs a little thickening. It's extracted from red seaweed, which sounds natural and quaint. But as we'll see, not everything natural is automatically your body's best friend. Are you implying that a seaweed-based gum might not be the pinnacle of culinary delight? Precisely. Who knew thickening agents would become the plot twist in humanity's epic saga against chronic disease? But apparently, carrageenan is here to remind us that the littlest additives can lead to the biggest headaches. Before we dig deeper, let's remind everyone that we're looking at this from Dr. Mercola's perspective. He's been highlighting how carrageenan is tied to insulin resistance, gut inflammation, and a host of other concerns. Exactly. And let me break it down in a way that's easy to picture. Insulin resistance is when your cells basically put up a do not enter sign in front of insulin. It leads to high blood sugar and can eventually spiral into type 2 diabetes. Somehow, carrageenan is stepping onto this stage like a cameo in a crime drama, messing with the body's ability to use insulin. So the big question is, why is our dinner table turning into a crime scene? How does carrageenan factor into this? As Dr. Mercola's analysis points out, carrageenan increases intestinal permeability, that fun concept we lovingly call leaky gut. So your gut lining is basically letting things slip through that should have stayed inside the digestive tract. Then your immune system thinks, we've got intruders, and it ramps up inflammation, which in turn messes with insulin sensitivity. Hold on. Leaky gut. It sounds like your intestines are letting guests crawl through the walls at night. Pretty much. Imagine your gut as a well-fortified castle. Carrageenan is that shady peddler who distracts the guards, letting unwanted visitors waltz in to loot the place. These intruders then spark inflammation, which is like the castle catching fire from within. The flames of inflammation can lead to insulin resistance. So it's a real fiasco. And just to be clear, people don't see immediate symptoms that scream carrageenan when they consume it, right? Usually not. That's the scary part. Most folks might blame an upset stomach on anything from stress to questionable burritos. Meanwhile, carrageenan could be quietly punching holes in their intestinal fortress, if this were a novel, carrageenan would be the stealthy saboteur creeping around in the background. That's right. It's not your typical cartoon villain hatching an evil plan in broad daylight. It's that sly shapeshifter that thrives in the hidden corners of processed foods. Now, there's also talk that carrageenan exposure might be particularly bad news for people who are already overweight, correct? Yes. Studies have hinted that if you carry extra pounds, carrageenan's effects are magnified. The inflammation ramps up even more, and insulin resistance can worsen. It's like throwing a lit match onto a bigger stack of dry firewood. So, maybe it's time to double-check the labels on those diet foods. Because ironically, many low-fat dairy or meat alternatives lean on carrageenan to achieve a creamy texture. Exactly. When you see something marketed as low-fat but magically thick and indulgent, you might want to do your best Sherlock Holmes impression on the ingredient list. You'll likely find carrageenan smirking back at you. Let's move on to the more unsettling side of the conversation. The potential cancer risks. I read somewhere that animal studies found a link between certain forms of carrageenan and tumor formation. Correct. And it's pretty jarring, especially degraded carrageenan, which is basically carrageenan that's been broken down. Research suggests it can wreak havoc on the colon in animals. Tumors, lesions, all the fun stuff you'd want to avoid if you prefer a comfortable life. That's frightening. So the idea is that in the stomach's acidic environment, carrageenan might partially degrade, turning into a more harmful compound? Precisely. And once it's in this degraded form, it seems more capable of sneaking past the gut barrier. Then it invites your immune cells to a party they should never have attended. Macrophages roll in, cause all sorts of inflammatory damage, and in the worst case, pave the way for tumors. It's like a cameo from a disaster movie. The moment the formidable macrophages show up, you know it's a real crisis. Indeed. And once your immune system is in overdrive, you start seeing more inflammation everywhere. Chronic inflammation is a major risk factor for numerous diseases, not just digestive issues. Let's step back for a moment and talk about diagnosing problems related to carrageenan. My impression is that it's tricky to identify an additive as the culprit if your symptoms are something vague like fatigue or upset stomach. Absolutely. Most people would never think to blame that spoonful of processed cream in their coffee. 
They'll suspect gluten, dairy, or whatever the diet fat of the month says is the villain. Meanwhile, carrageenan remains hidden in plain sight. So, how do we get to a place where folks realize carrageenan might be an issue? Raising awareness is a start. Reading labels and seeing that mysterious carrageenan is more than just a fancy name. It takes a bit of curiosity to realize that certain chronic issues could correlate with constant exposure to certain food additives. It's an aha moment when people realize it's not just their genetics or bad luck at play. Right, because we're not necessarily taught in everyday life that our morning cereal, almond milk, or deli meats might harbor an ingredient linked to inflammation. Precisely. If people remove it from their diet for a few weeks, they might discover they feel better. It's not an official diagnostic test, but sometimes an elimination experiment can reveal the hidden irritant. Now, from Dr. Mercola's perspective, once we realize the potential dangers of carrageenan, the next question is, how do we avoid it and help our bodies recover? It's like doctor. Mercola's personal motto, go back to the basics. Step one, ditch the processed foods. If it has a long shelf life or sports a cryptic ingredient list, that's probably your sign to move on. Choose whole, natural foods. Fewer labels mean fewer chances for your meal to be laced with carrageenan. I like the idea of, if you can't pronounce it, perhaps you shouldn't eat it. But carrageenan is quite pronounceable, so that rule might be too simplistic. True, sometimes the mysteriousness rule fails us. But the principle stands, if a food is drastically modified to appear creamier than nature intended, question why? Is it a real cream from happy cows, or did a manufacturing wizard conjure that texture with an additive? So, let's say you genuinely enjoy creamy soups, milks, or yogurts. What do you do if you want to avoid carrageenan? Make your own. Homemade yogurt or soup might sound like a cooking project, but at least you control every ingredient. Use real cream, or if you're dairy-free, some alternative that doesn't rely on questionable thickening agents. The taste might even be better, and your gut will thank you. Now, there's also talk about strengthening our mitochondria, those little powerhouses in our cells. Dr. Mercola mentions that if our mitochondria are working optimally, we can handle and heal from toxins more effectively. Yes, your mitochondria are essentially your body's battery packs. If they're well-charged, the entire system runs more smoothly, including the gut barrier. So part of the strategy is avoiding known mitochondrial saboteurs like excessive seed oils packed with linoleic acid or constant exposure to electromagnetic fields. You want your cells to have the energy to maintain and rebuild strong tissues. It's like ensuring your phone is always at full charge so you don't get stuck with an emergency and no battery. Exactly, but for your body. If your mitochondria are failing, it's like trying to run a city with one flickering light bulb. You need robust energy production to keep your organs functioning at their best, especially when toxins like carrageenan slip through. Let's talk about how carrageenan actually disrupts gut cells on a microscopic level. I understand it can cause something akin to erosion in the lining. Correct. When carrageenan degrades in the stomach, it becomes more adept at penetrating intestinal walls. This infiltration leads to epithelial cell loss, those cells that form a crucial barrier. Epithelial cells are like the bricks of your gut's fortress. If they're compromised, the walls become Swiss cheese. And that's how harmful substances, bacteria, or toxins can cross into the bloodstream, right? Exactly. And from there, the immune system flares up. Our buddy, chronic inflammation, can hang around indefinitely if this cycle doesn't get broken. The result can be anything from persistent gastrointestinal distress to more severe conditions like inflammatory bowel disease. We've also heard that carrageenan can accumulate in places like the lymph nodes, further fueling inflammation. So it's not just limited to the gut. Yes. It's like a traveling salesman who never takes the hint to leave. Once it sneaks through the gut, it can cause havoc elsewhere. If it accumulates in the lymphatic system, your body's secondary line of defense is on red alert. That persistent immune activation creates a situation where normal tissue can be damaged, potentially leading to more systemic issues. It's almost impressive, in a horrifying way, that a single additive can cause a domino effect of problems. Indeed, it's the domino effect from your kitchen pantry to your entire body. It highlights how intricately connected all these systems are. A small assault in your gut can balloon into widespread trouble. Let's pivot a bit. The conversation often mentions that the dose matters. The more carrageenan you ingest and the longer it's in your diet, the higher the risk. Is that correct? Right. There's a dose-response relationship, as they call it. High doses over extended periods seem to produce worse lesions and a greater potential for tumor formation in animal studies. While we can't ethically replicate that in humans, it's a strong hint that regular exposure might be setting the stage for chronic inflammation. Which means a little bit once in a while might not instantly wreck someone, but consistent consumption day after day could be a problem. Precisely. Though if you're already prone to gut issues or insulin problems, even a small amount might be more harmful. It's not one size fits all. 
Some folks notice negative effects quickly, while others can go years without clear symptoms. But beneath the surface, damage can still accumulate. Let's highlight some practical steps for the average person listening who's now mildly horrified at the thought of carrageenan swirling in their coffee creamer. Step one, read every label like it's a riddle you're determined to solve. I can't stress that enough. Step two, prioritize whole foods, especially fresh produce, unprocessed meats, and dairy from reputable sources. Step three, if you do need alternatives, find brands that specifically advertise carrageenan-free. They do exist, thanks to growing consumer awareness. And if someone can't part ways with, say, a favorite brand of almond milk that uses carrageenan, any suggestions? There are options without carrageenan. Almond milk can be made with locust bean gum, gar gum, or other stabilizers that are less implicated in these issues. Or you can make your own almond milk with some soaked almonds, water, and a blender. It's delicious and free of suspicious compounds. What about more intangible steps? We talked about mitochondria. Are there lifestyle habits that support healthy mitochondria, indirectly helping with gut health? Absolutely. Regular physical activity, proper sleep, and stress management are huge. Also, avoiding high exposures to electromagnetic fields can help, along with reducing seed oils full of linoleic acid. When your mitochondria function well, your body's repair systems can combat small irritations before they snowball. So, ironically, the best defense might be a good offense, strengthening overall cellular health so these toxins don't stand a chance. Exactly. Your body is resilient. It's designed to handle occasional insults, but chronic exposure plus poor cellular health is a losing combo. I'd like to discuss the gut microbiome angle for a moment. We've heard that carrageenan can disrupt the balance of good bacteria in the gut. How does that tie in? Well, your gut flora are like a well-choreographed dance ensemble. Each microbe plays a role. Introduce carrageenan, and it's like someone stomping onto the stage with no sense of rhythm. The beneficial bacteria can be thrown off, while less friendly microbes might flourish, spurring more inflammation and further gut barrier damage. It's a bit like messing up a complicated symphony with a random drum solo that never stops. Exactly. And once the beneficial bacteria start dying off, your gut lining doesn't receive the support it needs to stay strong and selectively permeable. Then you're back to that leaky gut scenario, fueling further systemic inflammation. Let's circle back to insulin resistance for a moment. Do we have a clear picture of how inflammation from carrageenan specifically disrupts insulin sensitivity? Chronic inflammation leads to cellular stress. Insulin receptors don't function properly in that environment. It's like trying to have a calm conversation in a room filled with shouting people. The insulin signals get drowned out. Cells become resistant, meaning they won't let glucose in as effectively, raising blood sugar levels. So, for people battling high blood sugar, the last thing they need is a hidden additive quietly undermining their progress. Precisely. They might think they're making healthy choices by switching to low-fat or alternative products, not realizing that carrageenan could be fueling a vicious cycle of inflammation and poor insulin sensitivity. Since the name of our show is Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, let's glean some final wisdom here. If we want to keep our cells happy, we avoid carrageenan-laden products, strengthen our mitochondria, and maintain a balanced gut environment. That about right? You've nailed it. Knowledge is the first step. Then it's about consistent action. If your diet is built around real, nutrient-dense food, there's less room on your plate for all these questionable additives. And if you do slip up, your robust mitochondria and balanced gut flora can handle a minor offense once in a while. It's comforting to know that our bodies have built-in defense systems, so long as we don't bombard them daily with irritants. Exactly. And it's worth noting that most people feel noticeably better when they reduce inflammation triggers in their diet. Less bloating, more stable blood sugar, maybe even improved energy. Little changes can yield big results. Let's consider the bigger picture. If we keep finding that additives like carrageenan cause real harm, maybe it's time for a broader re-examination of what's allowed in our food. One can hope. But while that might be slow to happen on a regulatory level, individuals can still make their own choices. It's empowering to realize you don't have to wait for official guidelines to protect your health. You can opt out of questionable products now. Right. We might be waiting for a while if we're depending on bureaucracy to catch up with the latest research. Precisely. Until then, we can be savvy consumers. Our wallets and the demand for better products can push companies to adopt healthier formulations. Let's sum up some quick bullet points, though we won't literally do bullets. We want folks to remember the main points about carrageenan. It promotes insulin resistance, contributes to gut permeability, can spark chronic inflammation, and may pose a risk for tumor formation in animal studies. Yep which means we can either ignore that knowledge and keep living in processed food bliss, or we can stage a mini-rebellion. I vote rebellion. I suppose that means reading more labels than we read novels. It's a tiny price to pay. 
We spend hours online comparing phone plans. Why not spend a couple of minutes checking the label on our ice cream? As we come close to wrapping up, I'd like to consider the psychological aspect. Many of us have comfort foods that might contain carrageenan. It's not easy to give them up. Any thoughts on coping strategies? Start with small steps. Identify the biggest carrageenan culprits, like your coffee creamer, and find a clean alternative. Taste test some brands. Maybe try making a homemade version. You don't have to give up comfort. You just need to replace the suspect ingredient. That's a gentle transition. People often fear that healthy translates to boring, but you might find a brand or recipe that actually tastes better. Exactly. If you're using, say, a luscious homemade coconut milk, you might be amazed at how rich and satisfying it is compared to a store-bought version full of thickeners. Real food has a flavor all its own. Earlier, you mentioned the environment's role in supporting health, like avoiding electromagnetic fields. That seems to be an overarching theme, minimizing stressors on the body so it has the bandwidth to stay healthy. Definitely. Toxins, stress, lack of sleep, EMFs, these all chip away at your resilience. Carrageenan is another drop in that toxic bucket. Reduce the load, and your body's innate healing mechanisms can function better. It's remarkable how everything ties together, a synergy of choices that either help us or hurt us. Precisely. Health isn't one silver bullet, but a combination of daily habits. Removing carrageenan is just one thread in the tapestry of wellness. Well, Alara, I feel we've thoroughly dissected carrageenan today. Any final quip you'd like to share? Just remember, if your food label reads like a chemistry exam, question it. Carrageenan might be the tip of the iceberg. It's rarely alone in the processed food world. You might find a cornucopia of cryptic ingredients that deserve the same level of scrutiny. Indeed. And I guess the moral of the story is that even if it starts with seaweed, it can end up playing cat and mouse with your metabolism. That's right. Seaweed might be a wonder of nature, but once it's chemically manipulated into a thickening agent, it can become a saboteur. Whether you're worried about insulin resistance, gut health, or just want to stay cancer-free, it's best to avoid the questionable stuff altogether. With that, we bring this enlightening chat to a close. You've been listening to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where we explore how seemingly small details, like an ingredient buried in fine print, can have significant implications for our health. I'm Alara Skye, encouraging you to keep your gut strong and your insulin sensitivity sharper than your wit. And please don't settle for a thickening agent that thickens your medical bills. And I'm Ethan Foster, reminding you that sometimes the simplest approach to health is just to eat food that looks like, well, food. Thank you for joining us. And remember, the next time you pick up a product with a silky smooth texture, ask yourself what's behind that magic. The answer might be something you'd rather leave on the shelf. Until next time, folks, stay curious, stay healthy, and keep exploring the deeper layers of your cellular wisdom. We'll catch you on the next episode.